All right, today's session is on the step down exercise, or some of you might call that a single leg squat, but it's a single leg squat backwards. We call it a step down. I'm gonna go through every single progression that we have from beginner right through some really hard stuff. So we're starting off with just being able to stand on one leg, right through to being able to sort of use weights, get on a BOSA, use bands. So we'll go from start to finish. Now, the step down exercise is like a single leg squat. It is bending your knee, bending your hip, leaning forward, stepping down, stepping backwards. We use a box at home. Try and make a box or in the gym if you've got one of these step boxes. It doesn't have to be that high. This is the one stage. You don't have to go to two stage, one stage. Stuff. It's just enough to give you the impression that you're stepping down. So get yourself something like that. You can do it on the floor if you want to. Much better having a box to try and set that up. First thing we're going to go through is getting that position of your knee right so when you start off these because there's no point you're doing this exercise if your knees rolling in or if your hips dropping down okay because this exercise is all about fixing that right this is a single exercise for stability on your knee trying to retrain your brain to get the muscle coordination right following some alignment of knee over toe hip over knee trying to get that movement correct okay so there's a little bit of strength in it but most of these exercises are about stability and control first then we make it harder with more stability and harder with more load so the strength thing sort of comes later the movement pattern is the most important part of this exercise first one you're going to work on is simply a toe tap now this may seem really silly but this is like i said we're starting from start to finish so what you do is bend your knee a little bit with some weight so i'm not using my right leg Bend your knee a little bit, bend your hip. Get used to being in flexion here and being in flexion here. Now, if I'm looking in a mirror in front of me, that knee or the middle of my knee needs to be over the middle of your foot. Now, the middle of your foot is between your second and your third toe. A lot of people sort of aim for the first and second toe, second and third toe, middle of your foot. So that knee needs to be there. Now, for those who are sort of in pain, this is usually for the people who are in a lot of kneecap pain, they start here. You don't want to be pushing that knee too far forward. That knee over toe is going to come later. When you start off, you bring the knee back away from the front of the foot. So you should be able to see your whole foot. It shouldn't be forward like that, because that's going to hurt people who don't have quads, don't have glutes, and have got sore kneecaps. So this exercise, just a little bend. Maybe 20, 30 degrees, nothing more, all right? A little bit of bend in the hip. Then what you do is can you Tap backwards, bring it up, balance, tap forward, bring it up, tap backwards. Now, you notice my knee, what I'm trying to do is work on keeping my foot and my knee, my hip, all in the same position and load bearing. I'm trying to learn how to load bear on this leg, bend, tap, bend, Tap. Now one set might be 10 of those. You're trying to aim for sort of three sets of that. Second progression from that is actually doing the step down movement, but we're still not letting the knee come forward. So like I said before, we are going to get the knee over toe later down the track, but when you're starting off, people in pain, people with weakness, they can't afford to have that knee going forward because that's what hurts them in the first place. So what you're going to try and do is start with a straight knee this time, and as you bend the knee, you sit backwards more than you bend the knee, all right? So if I'm going to stand on my right leg, bend my knee, sit backwards, tap the floor, come back up. I can have a rest if I want to. You're aiming to not rest, but if you need to, you can rest because the idea is to put weight on your foot. So if I do that again, if you watch my knee, I bend my knee a little bit. I bend my hip more. Come up, tap the floor. This is not really weight bearing. See that foot there? I'm not weight bearing on that foot. I'm weight bearing here. And come back up. Don't fall in the trap. Sunshine. Don't fall in the trap of stepping backwards and putting weight down here. You can't do that. You can't take weight off the leg. Stay on this leg. Big tip for you. All right? So that one is your little progression. Okay? So it allows people to do a step down, all right, without too much knee pain or no knee pain but because they're not putting their knee forward. If you're one of those people that has knee pain even with that, what you can do is use a bar, like I've done in my other videos, or a pole. Now the pole, if I'm using my right leg, left hand on the pole. Because what it's going to do is use this side, connect through to my buttock on the right. 
I can also put weight through it to take the weight off this. So there's two things you can do. You can either use the pole, help you with stability, so you can do that movement. Now, remember, if it's painful, just go to where it's about to be painful and back off. If that's where you need to start, that's where you need to start. Okay, so you can put weight through here. That also helps you connect through the glute and give you a bit more balance and stability through the knee, which is sometimes takes away the pain because that's half the problem you've got going on, not just weakness, stability through the hip. All right, so there's that one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you can stand on that, all right, and have your weight through this foot here, okay? So you're not doing as much weight bearing on that leg, okay? If it's a weight bearing issue, if you find that's painful, then you can keep one foot on the box and do that movement there, all right? If you've done all that, okay? The progression from that is doing the full step down. What that means is let the knee go forward. So if it's my right leg, let the knee go forward as you do a squat. So you're doing just as much knee bending as you are hip bending. So knee flexion, hip flexion, all right? Keeping your back flat. Again, still not putting weight through that back leg. It's tapping, okay? Tap, stop, come back up, straighten. Bend, lean forward, stop, straighten, all right? The whole time, still focusing on. Keep your knee in line with your foot, all right? That's your standard step in the exercise. And we use that one quite a lot for tracking. We know once that person can do that exercise, and they, they go going deeper, can they maintain that knee and not let it crash inwards? Okay, so the biggest thing, some people can bend their knee, go, oh, it doesn't hurt, it doesn't hurt, and then their knee does this, right? That's what we've got to correct. So you're not allowed to go, even if you can do the exercise pain-free, you're not allowed to go so low that you do that, all right? So you're only allowed to go down, go as far as you can control it, it's about to roll in, you come back up. Same with the hip. When you look in the mirror, if it's not your knee, it might be your hip. Don't let, when you go down the hips, don't let your hip do that, okay? You don't want to be down an angle here, okay? Because that means you're not going to be firing up that glute very well. So you need to try and keep a level pelvis here. When you drop down, if you're about to drop, so if I'm going down, the knee's not rolling in, but the hip is, you only go as far here until your hip's about to drop, and then you come back up again. So keep those two things in mind when you're doing that exercise is hip level and knee alignment the deeper you go sometimes can get harder so make sure that they stay level so if that is really good and you're trying to challenge knee stability that's the first thing we do knee stability or hip stability before load remember that stability before load one option is a band so this is going to challenge what my knee is doing really good for people who have knee problems okay so Say they're having problems, their knee rolls in when they run, that sort of thing, this is really good. Maybe they've got weakness in through the hip that lets their knee roll in, this challenges it. What I would do, have that band, which is a light power band, hooked up to something, all right? Just when you're doing this, make sure that box sits a little bit back from the anchor point because that'll give you enough room for this leg to be there without hitting there so much, okay? Now, have that band above the knee usually, Below the knee can get sort of a bit complicated, so just have it above the knee like that. The tension on this needs to be enough that it feels like it's pulling your knee in. So what you're doing is you are externally rotating your knee to neutral, as an alignment from the knee over the foot, to teach you to keep it there, right? It can't be so much that it's so heavy, or the band's so thick, that it constantly pulls your knee in and you can't, you're, you're struggling to fight it. So if that band is so heavy that every time I do this, it pulls my knee in, it's too heavy, make it lighter. Or step in a little bit, make this lighter, that sort of thing. So get the tension right. When you drop down, you should find that if you keep the tension on, it'll help you with your alignment. Actually having the band gives you the feet, one, strengthens you up because you're resisting. Okay, resistance, strengthening. The feedback of something, the pulling of what to do, like telling your brain to do a external rotation movement pattern, triggers you here. So you are saying, okay, do a step down with the external rotation, okay? Don't let my knee go into internal rotation. You are improving that movement pattern. This is the stability you're gaining. You're gaining stability in your knee and your hip by putting on a band. So it's lateral load, but it's a stability option, all right? That's great. Once you've done that one, your second stability option is making the ground unstable. So you can swap out the box 
for something like a BOSU, okay, upside down. So first thing, disclaimer, you need to be able to stand on one of these and balance first before you can do this exercise, so make sure you can do that. Don't just jump into it. With this one, what you're aiming to do is have that foot in the middle, so now the ground is unstable. I've got to try and do a step down on that, okay? So if you are off one side, it's going to be too hard. You've got to be right bang in the middle. And like I said, you need to be able to balance on these things. This is going to be harder for you to control, but you try and step down and come back up, all right? Again, no more load than doing a normal step down, okay? It's just a lot more muscle work, a lot more brain to hip and knee which is great. Some of those people returning to sport or returning to running, this is a really good option for you before you even think about loading it up. Especially if you're a little bit weak, like it doesn't like load, maybe we've got a meniscal problem there that doesn't really like too much load, but you need the stability for the stabilizing the knee, this is your option because it's only body weight. So work on that. And then your final option is working on actually loading up. So go back to the box here, Grab your weights. Now this is just, what, eight kilos? So there's 16 kilos. You could probably start with 10 or something like that. It doesn't really matter. Once you work on this, you'll probably find the weights actually keep you nice and stable. So you're not learning you know, as much stability with this, but you are learning how to bear load through the joint, okay? It's very important that you keep your body weight centered over your foot. So as my knee goes forward, my bum goes backwards, my shoulders go forward, my center of gravity stays even over the foot. All right, again, very important, you don't do this and start doing that. So you should have nailed that movement and this movement by now. If you've still got those problems when you've got weights, you can't do the weights. You've got to go back, get all that right, so you can do a full step down, all right, without rolling in, then you can load up the weights, okay? Make sure you don't need stability options first. That will give you more strengthening through your quads, hemis, glute, which will give you that extra strength you need on a single leg in your single leg squat. And that's our progression for today. Hope that helps you. See you next time.